What I'm doing is trying to be completely transparent and above board. And I really want to call out Fox 13. Are they here? Is that you? Shame on your news station. Shame on Adam Herbert's. Hey everybody, this is Adam Herbetz with Fox 13 News. As you can probably see, I'm recording this on a beach in Mexico right now. And if you asked me about a year ago, I'd probably tell you the last thing I expected to be talking about on my vacation is allegations of ritualistic child sex abuse. But with that said, this is an important story. It's something I've been researching now for about the past six months, trying to figure out what's true, what's not true. And then the last few days, we've had some pretty big developments. First, with the Utah County Sheriff's Office finally confirming the existence of an investigation, and then the Utah County Attorney David Levitt holding a press conference saying he and his wife are not child sex abusers, that he is not a cannibal, and that he is not a murderer. Obviously, for so many of us, these statements came pretty much out of the blue because Utah County Sheriff's Office has not publicly named Levitt as a suspect or a person of interest in this case, and neither have we. They simply said they're seeking victims of ritualistic sexual child abuse to please come forward, that they believe some new victims already have come forward, and they believe these victims could help corroborate stories of ritualistic child sex abuse that they have already heard between the years of 1990 and 2010. Now, Levitt said he thinks this investigation is aimed at him, that this is a political conspiracy against him, and he laid out quite a few reasons for that, which is why, uh, which is really what we're going to explore in this video. So I'm going to break the video down into four parts. Number one, we're going to talk about an old 151 page document that Levitt referenced on multiple occasions where he claims he was named as an abuser. Number two, we're going to talk about one of the known subjects of this investigation, what Levitt says his relationship is with that man and why he thinks the case has already been debunked. Number three, why Levitt says the timing of all of this is unfair with ballots set to drop in his reelection campaign within the week. And fourth, why Levitt says false rumors are also being spread by another man who's currently being charged with rape. I mean, the allegations that are, that are there are so outlandish and so crazy that... Um, yeah, they're, they're just not true. All right, so first let's talk about this report. On multiple occasions, David Levitt brought up a 151 page witness statement that he says was written by a quote, tragically mentally ill woman. What he said about there being a 151 page report is true. He said he received a copy of that report from someone in the media. I presume he was referring to me because I sent the Utah County Attorney's Office a copy of that statement about a day before the press conference asking for a response or any sort of statement. But what I have not done and what we continue to not do at this point is publish that report in its entirety because Utah County Sheriff's Office has never named Levitt or anyone else in that report as a suspect. As he said, Levitt said, there's about 15 or 20 different people named in that report. The woman who wrote it accuses her family members and many others as being part of a ritualistic child sex ring. That victim's name is redacted from the report. I've asked the Utah County Sheriff's Office if it's received any information to corroborate what's in the report, and they have declined to comment. Can you confirm or deny whether Levitt is a suspect in this case? Uh, we can't comment or confirm about any suspects in, in this case or any other uh, at this stage of any case. Is Levitt a person of interest? We can't confirm or, or uh, talk about people who might be persons of interest or suspects. Is Levitt involved in any way? Can't comment. I, I really want to call out Fox 13. Are they here? Is that you? Shame on your news station. Shame on Adam Hurwitz for asserting that the Utah County Attorney's Office dismissed a charge of rape without clarifying that that case was dismissed 10 years ago by my predecessor. So in this clip, Levitt is referring to charges dropped against a therapist who he was friends with. Our sources have confirmed that therapist is a subject of this investigation, not necessarily a suspect or a person of interest, and that the Utah County Attorney's Office did dismiss the charge. By the way, we did try to clarify. Not only did we reach out to the office for comment, 
We also reached out to the prosecutor directly and nobody was able to answer our questions. Levitt, though, is correct in saying that, yes, the charges were dropped by his predecessor before he was Utah County attorney. But again, I know for a fact we did not mention in our reporting anything about Levitt or Levitt dropping charges. Obviously, that would be impossible if he wasn't elected yet to serve in that position. We also reached out to the former Utah County attorney, Jeff Buman. He could not provide an explanation. And at the press conference, this is why Levitt said the allegations were never investigated seriously. And it wasn't even investigated in a serious way by the Sex Crimes Task Force of Utah County. Now, I, I would suggest to you, if they didn't investigate it, that would suggest that there's because the story is just so crazy. The therapist, however, was investigated seriously. He was charged, he lost his license, and again, obviously, those charges were eventually dropped. But Levitt said they were friends, that they were neighbors, that Levitt testified during his friend's divorce. Levitt said that this man was his elders quorum president and that he eventually learned this man was involved in Native American ceremonies that he says have nothing to do with sex, murder, or cannibalism. I prosecuted the therapist in Jueb County for poaching a deer. He pled guilty, it's been 20 years ago or more. He poached a deer to use for ritualistic purposes. And when I was a law student, this therapist was my elders quorum president in the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. He was my neighbor. I had a family connection. When his wife learned of whatever he was doing, she divorced him. And I testified at that divorce here. And, and let me be clear. When the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, for whom I do not speak, found out about this person's conduct, they kicked him out, right? I mean, th there is nothing, there, there is no organized ring of abuse. It was, it was debunked. For whatever season of the year, politically, that happens to be, it is what it is, but that's, that doesn't have anything to do with uh, how we determine when we're gonna release information. So during this press conference, David Levitt made references to how the sheriff was leaking documents to the media. Obviously, I don't know if that's true or not true. I can only speak for myself, but I can tell you, at least in my case, these documents were not leaked. They were obtained specifically from the Provo Police Department, not even from the Utah County Sheriff's Office, because they weren't the agency investigating that case so many years ago. Now, the way we got it from Provo PD is through a public records request. Here in Utah, we have something called GRAMA, which is the Government Records Access and Management Act. And when we asked for a copy of that dismissed case, Provo PD was legally required to provide it because dismissed cases are a matter of public record. I don't know to what extent that old case has anything to do with this case. Of course, we've asked about it and Utah County Sheriff's Office will not confirm. And that's why we feel at this point, releasing details surrounding that report would be premature. Again, the only reason we're really talking about it today is because Levitt brought it up so many times at that press conference. I don't know what they're investigating, but if it has anything to do with this therapist and the report of 25 years ago, that is 100% false. I haven't seen him in a decade. Have you talked to him? I haven't seen or talked to him. I've had no communication directly or indirectly. I don't even know where he lives. I have no idea of his whereabouts. He could be across the street for all I know. He could be in South America. I don't know. So the last thing I want to talk about here is a man named Arthur Knight. He published an article naming David Levitt as a primary suspect. I believe the way he wrote it was he claimed to have received, quote, exclusive confirmation from the department's public information officer, Sergeant Spencer Cannon. So obviously I see this article, I reach out to Sergeant Cannon and I say, is this true? Did you confirm any such thing? He said, no, I never confirmed that. I don't know why he published that. And of course, one of the things Levitt brought up in that press conference is how Arthur Knight is a defendant accused of rapes in Utah. That is correct. He is a defendant. He is being charged and they're trying to extradite him from Europe here to the United States. 
and that is definitely something worth considering when you examine the source. Of course, Knight is uh, maintaining his innocence. Spencer Cannon denies confirming anything to the article that was published in England. Don't you think it's possible that Razi was just making this up? Absolutely possible. That's why we need to have an investigation. So with that, hopefully I've answered some questions you might have about this case. I realize it's very complicated, and I'm sure some of the things I talked about here leave you with many more questions. Of course, we're continuing to review the evidence surrounding this case. We will publish more as the case develops. Um, one update so far, the sheriff's office says it has already received at least 20 tips from the public about ritualistic child sex abuse in those three counties, Juab County, Utah County, and San Pete County which means investigators probably have a lot of work to do. Again, they're not revealing any more details surrounding the evidence they have at this point, but we will stay on top of it and bring it to you as soon as we know more. So with that, thank you all for watching. Hope you all have a good rest of your day. Uh, and looking forward to being back in Utah with all of you very soon. Take care.